there's algebra students, oh, I'm sorry, this is made for my regular algebra students. I apologize. You guys are so smart. Sometimes I get you mixed up. Today we are going to graph linear inequalities. Now, this is really easy stuff, but you got to pay attention. And you got to stop trying to just memorize every step. Think about what's going on, okay? Remember that when we were doing inequalities that looked like this, you know, we would solve and get like x is greater than 5. And we'd do a number line thingy, and, you know, we'd have a 5 on there. We'd have an open point because it's not equal to. And then we would shade towards the numbers greater than 5, right? And this shading area, this, this blue arrow up here, if you want, I can highlight it. This area here, it represents all numbers that could be or are a solution to can't seem to make an arrowhead, to this inequality, right? Remember that. We don't just shade the way the arrows point or anything like that. We think about what we're doing. Uh, for example, we blank greater than 5. Any number that makes that true, maybe 10. Well, 10 would be over here, and I'm shading in the direction of 10. Don't just try to memorize steps. Think about what we're doing. You guys are smart enough to be able to do this. All right. Now, when you look at this, this inequality, it looks kind of like a y equals mx plus b equation, right? Slope intercept form. And you know what? Most of it is like that. It's going to behave just like that, except there's going to be some subtle differences. Um, the fact that there's an inequality involved. Ooh, I don't know why I did that. I guess I thought I was in highlight mode. Um, that is going to change things. But for right now, let's pretend that it's just y equals mx plus b. Let's identify b, which will be the point, what, 0, negative 4, right? You should already be a master of this. If you're not, you need to come in for help. This should be simple stuff. All right, the slope is going to be 2 over 1. So I'm going to rise 2, run 1, rise 2 more, and run 1. Okay. I'm going to draw my line, and I'm going to get, let's see, rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, and there we go. I'm going to get something that looks like this, and I'll make it go longer, and uh, put an arrowhead on the end. Now, we can't be done because it doesn't say y equals. It says y is less than or equal to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug a test point into this equation. I'm suggesting to you, just like on this example, there's more than one solution. I'm going to suggest to you that there are lots and lots of solutions that aren't necessarily on the line. Every point on this line will make this inequality true. Watch. Uh, here's the point 2, 0, right? If I put 0 in for y, put 2 in for x. Let's see if I get a true statement. 0 is less than or equal to 4 minus 4. So 0 is less than or equal to 0. Yeah, that's true. But I'm betting you that there are some uh, other, other points, lots of other points, that will make this inequality true. Okay, and normally I'm going to plug 0, 0 in. But right now, just for right now for this example, I'm going to go ahead and pick the point, uh, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to pick this point right here, 8, 3, 8, 3. Now watch what happens when I plug 8, 3 in. I put 3 less than or equal to 2 times 8 minus 4. 3 is less than or equal to 16 minus 4. I get 3 is less than or equal to 12. Is that true? Of course it is. What If I pick any other point underneath this line or to the right of this line, I'm going to get a true statement. But watch what happens when I plug 0, 0 in. Okay, I'm going to put in the origin. 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 4. 0 is less than or equal to 0 minus 4. 0 is less than or equal to negative 4. Is that true? Is 0 less than negative 4? No, it is not. 
So my, if I pick any other point on the left of this line, or say above it, I will get a false statement. Well, how do I tell the watcher, the reader, the person looking at my work, that <clears throat> all the solutions are below this line? Well, just like in the number line example, I shade. And here's what I do. I shade beneath the line. Just like this. There you go. And, of course, I'm careful if I... You know, I have a little mistake here where I go past the line. i got to be careful. But I'm shading all the points below the line. Every single one of those points in the yellow region and every one that I haven't shaded below the line that would be in the yellow region uh, make the inequality true. Every single point on the other side of the line do not make the inequality true. They give me a false inequality. Now, I'm normally not going to pick a random point like A3. I'm always going to pick 0, 0, almost always pick 0, 0 to test with. And if 0, 0 makes it true, I'll shade the side that 0, 0 is on. If 0, 0 makes it false, I'll shade the opposite side of the line. So let's see how this works. Here's another equation, almost in slope-intercept form. And, you know, there is one other difference here. Notice this. It doesn't say equals. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. All right, well, I'm going to graph the y-intercept, which is going to be 0, 2, right? You should know this. You should be able to pick up a y-intercept without even thinking about it, as long as the y is alone in your equation or inequality. My slope looks like it's 1 third up 1, 1, 2, 3, up 1, 1, 2, 3. There's my three points I like to use. Now, I'm not going to graph a solid line here. Anybody know why I'm going to use a dashed or a broken line? What's that, Nathan? Did you say because uh, it's not equal to? You're absolutely correct. Just like in the number line example, we used an open point when it wasn't equal. On the linear example, when it's not equal to, we used a broken line. All right. Now, remember, there's one more step here. I'm going to plug the point 0, 0 in. If I get a true statement, I will shade on that side of the line. It kind of looks like it's underneath the line, right? So I'm going to plug 0 in for y, greater than 1 third times 0 plus 2. 0 is greater than 0 plus 2. 0 is greater than 2. Is 0 greater than 2? <coughs> Definitely not. So the red point down here is not a solution that I can assume that none of the solutions are below the line. All of them are above. Now, I never want you to make an assumption. Like, Jared, remember the other day when you were you were talking about the, the inequalities on a number line, and, and you were trying to say, well, I thought somebody had told me that, you know, the way the arrow, and I stopped you. Never just, like, make a rule. Test it until you understand it. Because if you're trying to make a rule, you're going to be wrong when your equation looks like this. All right, now I know some of you are weak on this. This is a standard form. To graph standard form, the first thing you should do is make a t-table. Find the x-intercept and find the y-intercept. So I'm going to plug 0 in for y, and I'm going to get 2x uh, minus 3 times 0 greater than 6. 2x is going to be, actually I'm going to pretend it says equals for just this, for finding the intercept. So then x is going to be 3. So 3, 0 is on the graph. 1, 2, 3, right there. All right, then I plug 0 in for y, oh, excuse me, for x, and I get 2 times 0 minus 3y equals 6. That's 0, so I get negative 3y equals 6, uh, y is going to equal negative 2. So right there. Now, I know it's an inequality. It's a greater than, so it is a dashed line. If I want to find my slope, I can go down 2, back 4, so I can go down 1, 2, 
back one, two, three, four, down two, back one, two, three, four. And Pretty close. Looks like it's off a tiny bit. Um, pretty close. I'm not sure why. All right. So now I plug zero zero in for my test point, and I get zero minus zero is greater than six. Is that true? No, it is not. So in this case, I shade the other side of the line. Had the test point been true, I would shade. the same side of the line as the test point. All right. And all my solutions are beneath the line. OK, now don't make any assumptions about anything. Just always use a test point, substitute it in. All right, here we go again, another standard for y. I'll make a t table. I'm going to plug 0 in for y. We get 5x equals 10. So therefore, x is going to equal 2. So 2, 0 must be on my line. I'm going to plug 0 in for x, which will get me 2y equals 10. So y must equal 5. OK, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. And I get a solid line, because it does say equal 2. And it looks like my slope is up 5, back 2. So I'm going to go up 5. And back to, all right, and I do like to make sure it's aligned. Put an arrowhead on both sides. Plug my test point in. Plug in 0. Plus 0 is less than or equal to 10. Well, I think that's a true statement, isn't it? So here's a case where I do shade where the test point is. All the points are going to be to the left or beneath the line. OK? Now, again, don't make up a simple little rule, because your simple little rule might not work. Make sure you're plugging in a test point. And remember, the yellow region shows you all possible solutions to the inequality. OK, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody.